Hello and welcome back to Fish Fridays with me, Ben, the Empty Angler, where each week on a Friday I will sit and discuss a different fish species with you and I'll talk sizes, rigs, tactics and I'll even throw in a few top tips as well. This week then we are going to talk about the Ballon Rass. Let's get to it. So then the Ballon Rass, located all around the south coast primarily, also up the edges as well. They do get some big numbers down the west country, which is where they have a bit of a cult following amongst lure anglers, where they're targeted with soft jelly worms on a Texas rig primarily. So a Texas rig, for those that aren't aware, is basically you fish a soft plastic and you have a sliding comb weight, not attached to the lure itself, like a traditional sort of weighted lure, but it slides up and down. They normally have a swivel, however long away from the lure so the weight, the weight doesn't go all the way up to the you know it's not free to run the whole way up but then they literally they will hop that along down in and amongst where these rats like to live habitats then they love a rocky kelpie bottom they absolutely love it and if you're going to find ballon rats that's where you should be looking big boulders lots of hidey holes and lots of seaweed and kelp that's where these rats are going to be found they have an absolutely big mouth filled with huge teeth and i'll put a clip in here they are have a set of gnashers to be proud of and they sit there and they smash up mussels limpets crabs and such like and they go to town on these and they make short work of them with, with that dentistry they really are equipped so when you're unhooking these fish or you're getting your hands near it just be aware they will give you a nip if they get the chance they're not aggressive but just by their nature they've got the dentistry to do it it will hurt so just be aware of that then, okay? They also live amongst on the wrecks, okay? So a lot of lure fishermen, when you're down there fishing for your cod, your bass, your pollock, if you're dropping your lures down to the bottom and getting in it to win it, more often than not, you're going to pick up wrasse as a side catch or as a bycatch, sorry, because um, they do get in amongst all these wrecks and they get in quite big numbers at times as well and can be quite pesty. They also have a nasty habit with any soft plastic of trying to grab the tail when they'll attack the lure and because of those teeth, it will be a clean bite off and you bring your lure in and it'll have no tail. So if you are on the wrecks or you're on the reefs and you get a bite and you don't connect, don't get into autopilot and just flick it out. Physically check your lure because more often than not, you're missing half of it. And when you start spending 10, 12, 13 quid on some sidewinders or some uh, fish crazy eels, that starts becoming expensive. Sizes then, the average is about four pound. Anything over five is classed as a specimen. However, the records are currently uh, for the shore is nine pound one, and for the boat, it's just slightly bigger at nine pound seven. So normally with fish, the boat record tends to be a lot more than the shore. With wrasse, that's not the case, which just goes to show the habitat they love is in those big, close inshore rocky kelp bed so you've got every chance of getting a specimen so yep anything over five pound you've got yourself a specimen ras. so they're abundant there's loads of them they are dotted all around and there is other species of ras which i'm going to come on to in another video but there's generally not too much of a worry about ras. however there has been a slight concern recently down west because they've discovered that ballon ras make brilliant cleaning fish so what I mean by that is they're being caught in fish traps, not nets, fish traps, and they're being kept live in tanks and they're exported up to Scotland and they get themselves a little job on the salmon farms and trout farms where they basically eat all the, the lice that are attacking the salmon that they're selling. So the rats are going in there, putting all these little farm, the fish farm pens, and they're basically cleaning these fish. So there has been a heavy fishery down west for these recently due to the demand up north in Scotland for the salmon farms. But other than that, as a whole, they're pretty widespread and abundant then. Uh, colors and descriptions of these fish, generally they're gonna be greens and browns, like little spots and a few little markings through them. However, occasionally you will get a nice big red strawberry colored one, as I like to describe it. Now, these big strawberry colored ones, they're slightly different to the, they're the same species. However, for reasons unbeknown to me, the alpha or the big daddy of the reef or the wreck, they take on sometimes this big bright colored thing. I guess it's an aggression or territorial thing. And these bright red yellow ones, if you're lucky enough to get yourself one of them, that's the alpha of the reef or wreck. So they make brilliant photos and I'll try and put a few photos in here 
Also, John at, over at the Fish Locker has been kind enough to allow me to use this photo as well. This is a lovely specimen that he had, and it really shows off the strawberry colours. But like I say, these big red ones, they're generally the alphas, so get yourself some lovely photos for them if you're lucky enough to get one, because you don't see too many of them. So let's come on to the gear then we need for these wrasse. They are really hard fighting fish. They are, they are meaty, they are stocky. More often than not, when they're attacking your bait, they're not actually always doing it because they're hungry. A lot of the time, it's just purely an aggression thing. They're very territorial and they get you out. To that end then, they hit hard when they do hit, especially on a lure. All you really need is a nice light lure set up. You don't want to fish too heavy for these because it just kills the sport. Same with any fish. So your standard sort of lure set up, whatever you're going to use, a nice action and a nice little fixed spool reel, something like a pen battle two or a three will do you lovely. And I personally, I use an Akuma Helios 20, 60 gram. You can go lighter than that, but I tend to use one rod for a lot of fishing. So I find the 2060 Akuma Helios has got a great action and they can handle a bigger lure for on the boat or the shore. But anything that you use for your bass fishing or your light spinning, that's gonna be suitable for Ballon Rass as well. I always fish braid um, when I'm using my gear, unless there's a specific reason why I would want mono. But you are gonna be fishing into rocky, reefy areas, covered in barnacles, covered in mussels, and lots of snags. So if you're lure fishing for these, make sure you give yourself a nice, long, strong leader, a 30, 40 pound fluorocarbon leader down to your lure and then that'll give you enough rubbing strafe as it was. So if you do get these lures in amongst the reef, or the wrecks, if you're on the wrecks, that'll be enough to get you out. If you're fishing with baits then, uh, a simple two-up rig with a nice strong hook, baited with ragworm, you cannot go wrong. So whatever you're using from the shore, again, you don't have to go too heavy unless you're down in the rough stuff, uh, but a nice beach caster on a tripod, and again, a nice fixed ball reel will do you good. Uh, whatever, you, there's no real preference. I can talk rods and reels and tackle for certain fish all day long. But for this, all you need is a decent shore setup to get you down in amongst the rough stuff and that will do you good. Um, other than that, like I said, ragworm, nice strong hooks. They have got a, bit, a decent strong mouth and they will bend out anything that's not up to scratch. So make sure your terminal tackle is nice and beefy. Couple of top tips then for wrasse fishing in general, okay? Now this is just what I've experienced and what I know, there's other top tips available from other fishermen. First one is a nice easy one, and that is because you're gonna be fishing in the rough stuff, you're gonna be losing gear. Likewise, when you're conger eel fishing from a boat in the wreck, tackle loss is just inevitable when you're fishing down amongst all these rocky kelpie uh, fisheries for these balans, all right? So first one I'm gonna give you is to fish a rotten bottom. Whether you make a length of line that is slightly weaker than your trace, so it parts off, um, is up to you. Or you can have a, like a little, um, find yourself a weak swivel, a small swivel, bend it out slightly so it weakens, clip it back in. So when you're yanking and pulling, if you get stuck, it gives way. Um, that's another top tip you can use. The second top tip I'm gonna give you is if you can find them, don't use leads, use something like a spark plug. Um, you get them from scrap yards and the rest of it, all right? Um, now people are gonna say, oh, but what happens if you lose it? Well, if you, if you lose a lead, you put a lead in the water anyway. A spark plug, they're free, they're cheap, they're easily available. You could also use a stone if, you got a, if you're in this way inclined. Use a stone, drill it, put a swivel in it or, or, or a hole for it and just tie it on. Um, but terminal tackle losses are gonna happen. Another top tip I'm gonna give you is when you're recycling old line, or if you're walking down the beach or the piers and everyone strips loads of line off and you find those bundles of line just lying around that you should put in a line recycling bin, those make perfect traces for this. This is absolutely ideal because more often than not, the mono people throw away is actually perfectly fine. It's just that they don't feel comfortable on the reel anymore or they're buying some fresh stuff because it's a new year and they want to go armed with brand new gear for peace of mind. This bundle of mono line that you see lying around or that you strip off your reels is perfect for making up rass rigs. A simple twisted boom or just a two up down rig, whatever, you know, two up, one down, a bit like my bream rig. Absolutely perfect for rass, all right? So there you go, three top tips there and all of it is mainly geared around tackle. So spark plugs or some sort of alternative weight because you're gonna lose them. Um, recycled line is another one. Uh, I can't remember what the third one was, whatever I said at the beginning there. But nice and simple. These are really good hard fighting fish. They are a pain when they bite your lures. 
but there's plenty of them and they do give a good scrap on light gear. So get yourself out there and go and find some Balamras.